Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and it's finally here. Today is the day we're going through all of my face palettes. If you've been around my channel for a bit, you'll know that I'm a sucker for a good face palette. I really like just having everything I need to do a full face, kind of just all in one place, because I have to admit, I definitely like like eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes more than I like base and face products so if I can have everything I need like contour highlight blush everything in like one palette or one easy to get to place I'll take it especially when I'm in a rush especially when I'm just getting ready for work so I counted I actually have 14 face palettes which is quite a lot of face palettes and there's a huge range here I've got drugstore all the way up to like luxury $80 face palettes and I really wanted to do a video ranking all of them. So I'm not going to be able to show you applications for all of these because that's it would take years. <laughs> but I do have a couple of individual videos for some of these palettes so when applicable I will link those. But I really just want to show you swatches and talk about all of these palettes. I'm going to start with the palettes that I don't really like, I have problems with, and then we'll go on to the palettes that I really enjoy and then we'll talk about my top favorites. And then I actually have one and I'm going to call it like a, what's the word, honorable mention, because it's a palette I haven't actually dug into yet, but it's a formula that I'm very familiar with. Before we jump in, for the purpose of this video, I defined a face palette as a palette that has at least two different, excuse you car. For the purpose of this video, I defined a face palette as something that had at least two different products in it. So it couldn't just be a highlighter palette, it couldn't just be a blush palette, it had to have at least a blush and a highlight or a bronzer and a contour or something and these are all only powder products I didn't bring in any cream palettes these are all just powder so let's jump in first with some palettes from covergirl so this one is the covergirl true blend serving sculpt palette in 500 I assume they have some other shades in this and then I also have from covergirl the peach punch highlighter palette which is a bit of a, a misnomer because there's only one highlighter and there's a blush and then there's a bronzer I have the same problem unfortunately with both of these palettes and it's that the bronzers in here while they're not like a horrible shade this one's definitely too dark for me but these pull super orange and you can kind of see that in the swatches while I actually like the the um, blush from the peach palette and the highlighter is okay and I actually really like the blush in this palette over here the bronze I, the bronzers are not usable for me and it's just because they make me look like an oompa loompa <laughs> I just can't get any use out of them. I have to say the formula, it's nice. I think the bronzers were a little bit patchy too, which didn't help when they pulled so orange. But I have to say, I really do enjoy these blushes to the point where I was actually tempted to get one of like just their blush palettes. And I'm probably going to pick them up eventually, but I have a lot of blushes and I'm realizing like how long it takes to go through blush. So I don't really need to pick them up, but I'm tempted because I actually really enjoyed the blush formula of both of these. And this one is more of like a shimmer satin kind of finish, whereas the peach one, it's, it's a, more of a matte, but I do see some sparkle in here. But if you apply it with the brush, the sparkle doesn't really get onto your face. And both of the highlighters, this one's a lot smoother of a highlighter, whereas this one I can see like actual like chunks of glitter in it. And it doesn't apply as nicely, but... Yeah, so that, that's kind of why they're in like this meh category. Another thing I just kind of wanted to point out is that this is called the Peach Punch Palette. And it's a, it's like more of a pink blush. Like this is not really as peach as it could be. I think if this was a more peach toned blush and highlighter, I'd be way more into it. But it's, it's pink. Why are you calling a pink palette the peach one? I don't know. Also, the scent of this is kind of overpowering. But if you leave it open overnight, it'd probably dissipate a bit more. Uh, this one had no scent, so there you go. They also had a chocolate version of this that I had a while ago, and that didn't work for me at all. I like immediately decluttered it because it just, it wasn't for me. Next, I want to talk about two palettes from Essence, and I still don't understand the full situation with these because on the back, they do talk about how they are a collab with Casey Holmes. And I know back when this first released, I think some Ultas released this collab early, and then there was talk about how it wasn't like an authorized collab anymore and that there might have been things like people were denying that this was it was a weird thing 
um, but I found this in my local Ulta. It was a whole display with her picture on it, and it had this, some loose powders, and some other products. I picked up the two loose powders. They're both, like, really dark for me. I don't think I could really get much use out of them, though I still have them. And then these two palettes. So the first one is called Peachy Bean, which I get, okay, it's got a peach blush, um, it's got a more mauve berry blush, and then it's got two kind of deep highlighters. One's more of a champagne shade, and then one is more peach leaning. The other palette is called Jelly Keen, which, what does that mean? <laughs> Jelly Keen. I don't know. And in this one, you get a more um, satin slash shimmery kind of peach toned blush. You have a really kind of hot pink blush over here. And then you've got two highlighters that are almost exactly the same. Like the champagne highlighter shade, I'm, I'm like convinced is the same highlighter shade. They just changed the other one because this one is more peachy kind of leaning. Whereas this one is more berry-ish leaning. But if I'm being honest, once you actually apply these, a lot of the highlighters look the same. So that is kind of my issue with these. While I like the blushes, I've actually reached for these blushes a lot over the past couple of weeks when I'm not using my Pen and Palma blush. That's like the only good part. I'm not a huge fan of these highlighters. They're just kind of meh. Like they're not particularly blinding. They don't blend out as nicely as I know other highlighters do. And the packaging is kind of annoying. It's like flimsy cardboard. I'm probably gonna just pot the blushes and keep those in a Z palette and then get rid of the highlighters or declutter them to someone who will actually use them. But the packaging is kind of annoying. And then when you close it, they close like together. So you've got blushes with your highlighters. Well, I think it was kind of a cute idea. I really think these should have been made a little bit, uh, more unique. Like, how am I trying to say this? I want these to be more different because they kind of, like you're looking at them, they kind of look pretty similar. Right? Like they're not different enough where I needed to buy both of these. Quite honestly. And it's not like one's more for deep tones and one's more for light tones because the highlighters are kind of the same. So I, I really don't know what they were going for here. <laughs> but I gotta say, I actually like the formula of the blushes. The blushes are really nice, but I don't think these are worth it for the whole thing because the highlighters aren't that great. Next, I want to talk about a face palette from e.l.f. I used this in my most recent redo of my full face of e.l.f. video. I'll throw that up in the cards if you're interested. And this is called the Glow Up Face Palette. I purchased this at Target for $7, and as the title would say, or kind of imply, most of these are glowy products. I am not personally a huge fan of what they chose to make like glowy because like here you've got like this quad right here you've got like a bronzer and a contour shade and then you've got those almost exact shades as shimmers which i personally don't go for like a glowy contour sometimes a glowy bronzer could look really nice which that one i did get a little bit of use out of but a glowy contour i'm not really going for um, these blushes right here, they're just okay. I didn't really like the formula that much and I don't like that like the hot pink was matte and like the peachy one was shimmery because you really don't get a lot of the pigment out of this peach one like at all. You have to really dig your brush in and then put it on. It's more of a highlighter than a blush. You're not really going to get a nice flush out of it. And then they've got like this kind of beige shade right here, which is too dark for me to really use as like a pale highlight, like under my eyes or anything. And then this white shade is a decent highlight, but it, it's, it's honestly just meh. So unfortunately this palette is kind of a bust just because the shades don't really work that well for me. And I know they're not things I'm really going to be reaching for. And I think they only have this in one shade too. You see that? kind of a lot with drugstore priced products is that they'll come out with like face palettes but there's only one palette and you're not making anything for lighter people you're not making anything for people with deeper complexions you're just kind of like oh here's a palette but like what the heck so the last product i have in like the kind of meh category is the emily edit needs palette now i've got a few things to say about this. Overall, I like the idea of having everything that you need in this palette. And I have to say the packaging is spectacular. It's sturdy. It's got a gigantic mirror. And theoretically, it does have everything you need to do a full face and get out the door. I don't like the way this is laid out. These pans 
are horrible for trying to like get a blush brush into or getting my bronzer brush into or even trying to get a sponge into this to like use it under your eyes. Um, on top of that, the bronzer is like really deep and again saying about more drugstore brands really only doing one palette. There was only one version of this palette released. So the bronzer was a bit too dark for me. It was definitely more of a contour so I can still use it but unfortunately a lot of people aren't gonna be able to use these shades. Blush was okay, but again, I had issues getting it onto my brush to actually apply. I gotta say, I really didn't reach for the eyeshadows that much, but that's because I'm an eyeshadow person. Like, if I'm getting a face palette, it's because I want to do my face real quick and then have time to, like, explore and play and do fun things with my eyeshadow, as opposed to just quickly doing something like this. But I can see how this can be really useful and helpful for someone who really does just want a simple everyday school or work appropriate thing in one place. So I can see how those are useful. I have to say my biggest gripe is with the highlighter because the highlighter is just like a chalky mess. And when I first got this palette, there was this like, let me show you what the highlighter looks like. So this is what the highlighter looked like when I first got the palette too. And you see how it looks like, like it looks like it's gone bad. It's got like that weird texture to it. And I got the palette and I was like, oh my God, did I get a bad one? But I went online and almost all of them look like this. So I don't know if it's just something with the formula or with Makeup Revolution, but that really turned me off on top of the fact that the, the highlighter really isn't usable. It's really more of a matte highlighter like this shade right here. Like it's... Yeah. So while I loved the concept of this palette, the fact that the bronzer was too deep and didn't really work with my skin tone, the fact that the blush pan was not big enough for me to really use, and the highlighter was kind of a bust. Yeah. Before we move on to the palettes that I actually really enjoy, let's talk about the meh in the middle one. And this is from Kat Von D. This is the shade and light contour palette. This is the palette that I'm panning in my 9 pan 19. That whole project is going on. If you missed that, I'll throw the whole playlist up in the cards. I do not support Kat Von D. So I am trying to use up the products that I have in my collection and this is one of the products and it is a face palette. So you have three bronzer slash contour shades and three highlight shades. I don't have all the shades to swatch anymore because I've actually used up a couple of them, mainly just the light highlighter shades. I've been using those to set like my eye primer. But I have to say that I actually really like the bronzer and contour formula. They really blend out nicely and it's easy to go to for an everyday bronzer and contour. That being said, I can't recommend this palette. I really don't recommend anything Kat Von D. So this is something that I purchased a couple years ago that I am finding it pretty easy to use up, but once it's used up, it's gone and it's out. We're gonna move on to the palettes that I overall like, but that there are some issues with. So the first one is from Too Faced. This is the natural face palette, and this is one of the first face palettes that I fell head over heels for. Not only does it feel luxurious, it is a bit annoying that it's not a perfectly flat surface, but this feels luxury. <laughs> Um, you open it up, you've got a gigantic mirror. Um, it doesn't stay up on its own for, for the most part, unfortunately, so you gotta hold it up. And you've got these shades. You've got two highlighters, two blushes, and then like a really deep, glowy bronzer tri trio. Double right here. I can't do words anymore, apparently. So I will say, as someone who doesn't really like a glowy bronzer, I haven't really been super attracted to the shade right here which is called tropic like it's hot because it is really deep it is really bronzy so you could use that if you like a glowy contour i'm not a huge fan of a glowy contour so i never reach for that one really i really do like sunny honey it is a nice bronzer but i have to wait until i'm tan to use this because these shades are pretty deep you can try to go into the light hand but matter of fact these are mostly deep shades I really like this blush, the pink sand blush. It's more of like a, a, a deep mauve kind of blush. The hot pink one, there's definitely times for it. I don't reach for it every day, but it is a nice blush. And both of these, the formulas are great. They apply really nicely. My favorite part of this palette though, are the highlighters. These are some spectacular highlighters. I've totally worn away the imprint on one of them and it's getting there with the other one. This was kind of intriguing for me because I have other highlighters from Too Faced and I don't like the like individually packed highlighters and I don't like them as much as I like these. I'm actually wearing the highlighter satin sheets today and I honestly just love this highlighter. This is the one that I reached for like every day when I first got this palette. 
stunning. Overall, now, the way I'm doing my makeup, this wouldn't be a full face for me, but this is a great like summer bronzy glow palette. Definitely couldn't reach for it during the summer or during the winter because of how pale I had gotten. I lightened like three shades. <laughs> but I can still use the highlighters and I still really, really enjoy this palette and I'm glad it's part of my collection. There's just a little bit of, uh, what's the word? I can't do words today. There are some caveats to the palette, but really good. The next two palettes I don't want to spend too much time on because I did a full dedicated video about them and they're the two hourglass palettes from this past 2018 holiday season. The first one is just I'm gonna call them the pink one and the unlocked one because that's how I remember them. They have longer names. Check out the other video it'll be up in the cards if you want to see the full names but the pink one right here I love the hourglass powder formula. It's spectacular. I'm wearing their face powder today over my foundation. It's the same shade as in here, but I didn't actually pull this face palette out to use it. Uh, the only reason that this one is listed below the other palette, you can see in that other video, but the shades don't work for me as well as the Unlocked palette. The Unlocked palette is kind of like my almost perfect face palette. The only thing it's missing is a contour shade because there isn't a contour shade in here but you've got some beautiful blushes, you've got a nice bronzer, you've got a highlighter, and then there's two face powders in here. Also, the face powder over here is a bit too dark for me to use, so that kind of renders that part of the palette a bit useless for me. But overall, this is still a great deal. I love these powders, I love this packaging, perfect for traveling. I will be traveling. I have two conferences I have to go to for work later this year and then I'm actually going to go on vacation with my boyfriend in October. I'm probably going to bring this one if I'm being honest because I like this one a lot better. So the Unlocked palette has all these shades right here. There's like a deep contour slash bronzer. There's a bronzer. There's a face powder. There's two blushes and then there's the highlighter and this I can literally just do most of my 90% of my face with this. Like I said the only thing missing is like a true contour powder that I would have to bring in from somewhere else. Again, I go into way more detail and actually compare both of them, show you application side by side in that Hourglass palette video. So if you want more details, check that one out. But I would really recommend both of the palettes if you're, you're in the market for them. I'm pretty sure they're not available anymore though. I'd have to look at that. Next is a palette I just, I can't get over how much I love the formula even though I haven't bought from the brand ever since their face tape shape whatever fiasco. This is from Tarte. This is their original clay play face palette. Again, awesome for traveling. It's really sturdy, huge mirror, and you have a whole bunch of neutral eyeshadows and you have face powders. So you've got like a light bronzer, you have kind of more orangey deep bronzer, and then you've got like a really deep contour, or these can work as bronzers for a different variety of skin tones. And then you've got eyeshadows down here, everything you need for a good neutral look, and then these big eyeshadow pans could also work as like matte highlighters if you so needed. The, I could not get over how much the formula of these face powders, what, like how incredible it was. They blend out like a dream. <laughs> I was using this every day before I got another palette, but the formula on these is just spectacular. I'm pretty sure they discontinued this original palette and they came out with a new one that had like a blush in it. I did not get that one because that was after I was no longer supporting Tarte, but I did see that a dupe brand, I think it was Profusion, which I have one of their palettes later on, Profusion came out with basically looks like a dupe of this palette or the newer version of this palette for like $5. And I saw um, Emily Noel did a video on it. I didn't watch the video yet because I'm actually really tempted to pick up that palette for myself. I really want to try it out. So I think I'm going to grab that one. But uh, like the Kat Von D, this is one where I like really enjoy the product and I'm probably just going to use it up and move it out of my collection. I'm not, I haven't purchased anything from Tarte since their whole foundation fiasco, like over a year ago now. But I actually really enjoy this palette. So we're finally here. We're at the top two face palettes. And again, I have one that is really affordable, drugstore priced, and I have one that's a little bit more higher end. Let's talk about the higher end one first, and this is from Smashbox. This is their Ablaze face palette. This is my perfect face palette. I absolutely adore the Smashbox formula for bronzers and contours. I can't get over them. Um, so this is a nice travel friendly palette, sturdy. You've got a gigantic mirror and you open it up and you've got all of these shades right here. You've got a bronzer, a contour, 
two blushes, one kind of satin glowy, one uh, matte, and they're both peachy toned, which I love. And you've got two highlighters, one more peachy toned, and one more kind of champagne-y, goldy toned. My only gripe with this palette is that I wish the sizes of these palette or these pans were switched. I really want the blushes to be bigger like this so I can swirl my brush, and I want the highlighters to be a little bit smaller. But this is my whole face in a palette. <laughs> I love this palette. I've always adored the, like I said, the contour and bronzer formula. I originally picked up the small trio, like the contour trio from Smashbox and fell in love. I, I really love those powders. And so that really got me to pick this up and a palette I'm going to mention a little bit later on. But this is like my favorite face palette. It's got everything I need. The shades work really well for me. They blend out perfectly. Uh, ah gorgeous palette. So my favorite drugstore priced palette was actually very surprising to me. I picked this up kind of as a on a whim from Target when I finally found it in store and this is from Profusion. This is their Sculpt and Glow in the shade Moonstone. So they got a Moonstone edition and then they have a deeper version which I really appreciate because I mentioned earlier when more affordable brands come out with face palettes they tend to just do one palette. They actually came out with two versions of the palette and you can tell one is significantly deeper than the other. So I really appreciated that. You get so much in this palette. Look at this. So you get six highlighters and you get three face powders. So there's like a matte highlight, a bronzer, and a contour. So this is kind of like for me, I'm thinking of a dupe of that Smashbox contour trio. While I personally can't use all of the highlighters in this palette, the formula is really nice. I've worn these two highlighters, so Euphoria and Lightning, the two lighter ones, to work several times, and they're just gorgeous. They blend out amazing. And I was shocked by how nicely the bronzer and the contour in here blend out. I'm actually wearing those today. And I gotta say, I'm shocked. This is $10, and I like the formula as much as I like my Smashbox one. Amazing. The only downside, which isn't really a downside because for the most part I don't like the brushes that come with palettes, this brush is kind of garbage. I thought it might be a dupe for my NARS Eda brush, what I use for contour, but when I applied this contour like with this brush, it looked really patchy, it didn't blend, it looked bad. But when I applied it with my own brushes, it looked gorgeous. So that really helped me realize the importance of brushes and how like different brushes can apply things different ways. So don't use this brush, get rid of it. But this is an awesome palette. I've been reaching for it almost like every day. I've been trying to like force myself to go back to my 9 pan 19 because I want to keep going for this. The only thing that would have made this like perfect for me would be to A, make it a little bit smaller and get rid of the brush, but B, only do one row of highlight and do the middle row blushes. That would have been perfect. You would have had everything. You would have had everything. But like I said, $10, they have two versions in two different shades for you. And ah, this came out of nowhere. This really surprised me. <laughs> it's really gotten me more interested in Profusion as a whole and more Profusion products. And I really do want to do a full face of Profusion. And this is going to make it so easy because most of it's right here. Last but not least, I have my honorable mention product. So this is a palette that I haven't actually dug into yet, but I'm very familiar with the formula, as you've heard. This is from Smashbox, and this is their Holidays Contour and Spotlight palette. So this was a holiday palette that they came out with last year. It's bulky. It's got a huge mirror. Hello. It's really big, and you've got all of these shades right here. I picked this up on a complete whim because I was at Sephora and it was on sale for like $19. And I knew I loved their contour and bronzer formula for powders and I was like, oh, I'd be stupid to pass that up. <laughs> so while I haven't actually dug into this palette particularly, I do know their formula for bronzers and contours and I love them. So while I really didn't need to pick this up, I'm glad I did. It is actually very pretty. This is like a really nice holiday release from Smashbox. Uh, I am glad that I waited and like got it on sale because $19 is killer for this and for contour powders I know I'll eventually get to because I currently still have a contour trio. I depotted it and it's in one of my face palettes. I've been neglecting it since I've been panning um, a contour palette for my 9 pan 19, but I know everything I've tried from Smashbox that is contour related I have loved. So I didn't think it would steer me wong, wong, wrong to pick this up. <sighs> we did it. 
Those are all of my face palettes, all of my thoughts, all of the swatches. Let me know down below if you like face palettes and if you do, which ones are your favorites and if you agree with my thoughts on these face palettes. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.